Smallpox, the greatest killer ever. There's a compelling case for that. Uh, until uh, Edward Jenner's discovery in about 1800 uh, of the power of vaccination through some acute observations, smallpox uh, was the greatest killer we've ever seen. You know, you would say, well, maybe I could make a case for bubonic plague, which certainly had its moments in the history of humans. But smallpox was a consistent killer with a fatality rate even among those who had been exposed generation after generation in a population of about 20 percent. In populations where smallpox had never occurred, like the Native Americans, when smallpox was brought over by the Europeans, the fatality rate could reach 70 or 80 percent, sometimes higher. Smallpox was the scourge for thousands of years. Where did smallpox come from? Well, we still have a lot of pox diseases today. It came from animals, probably from a monkey. In fact, if you really want, you can go find yourself a monkey that has monkey pox. There are a number of pox diseases, and these diseases all bear similarities to smallpox. The story of smallpox is really the story of the development of vaccination. It became obvious after a while that there wasn't much you could do about smallpox. People didn't understand viruses, of course, uh, prior to 1900. But we did know that uh, once you got smallpox, uh, you just had to let the disease run its course. Smallpox plays a curious role in all sorts of cultures. For example, in Europe, to be considered a beautiful woman in the 1700s, of which only about 15% of the women were considered this way, meant that you had no smallpox scars on your face. Perhaps the makeup industry should pay a little more homage to smallpox. But what happened, people began to realize that uh, maybe there was a way to lessen the severity of smallpox. And variolation uh, came into vogue. It actually had its origins in China and India where people had been grinding up the sores or the scabs of smallpox. People had been inhaling these, uh, trying to get a milder case of smallpox to avoid uh, sometimes certain death. This practice caught on and was brought into Europe where it expanded even over into uh, the early United States. But, of course, like anything else, uh, all you were doing was inoculating the person with the virus and hoping for the best. And then along came Edward Jenner. Edward Jenner, a country physician, uh, took some anecdotal evidence that uh, milkmaids out in the country there in England, uh, when smallpox came around, they did not get a smallpox infection because they'd had a cowpox infection. As they milked the cows, they had picked up a disease that looked very similar to smallpox. These cowpox pustules would be on the arm, they would recover, they would have scars there, but they wouldn't get smallpox. Edward Jenner ran with this idea. He took some pus out of these pustules, inoculated it into, I'd like to think, volunteers. Uh, they got an active cowpox infection, and then he uh, challenged them with smallpox. To his amazement, they survived. In fact, they didn't get smallpox. Well. Because he was working with cows, he took the name vaccination from Bach or cow. And did his idea catch on? Heck no. In fact, no one really bought into it for a long time. He finally had to take most of his money and write a 90-page monograph explaining his results and all the scientific theories. Once he did that, it began to catch the eye of a number of notable people, particularly Thomas Jefferson and others who saw the value of vaccination. And it wasn't long before he realized that vaccination and not variolation was the way to control smallpox. Since that time, uh, everybody got vaccinated. And if you were uh, old like me, you've got the cowpox scar on your shoulder to show that you had an active cowpox infection to prevent smallpox. Now, the end of the story for smallpox is this. We went from the greatest killer of humans to the only disease we have finally eliminated on the planet. And the reason is threefold. One, eventually smallpox mutated to the point that it did not have any host but humans. Two, it was only transmitted by a particular method. And three, we had a really powerful vaccine that was effective. And so in uh, the World Health Organization, other groups in the 1970s uh, went after smallpox with their wildfire vaccination program. And finally, by 1977, through the use of uh, this 
wildfire vaccination program, the last case of wild smallpox uh, was gone. And since that time, in fact, since 1980, we don't even administer the smallpox vaccination anymore to the general population. From the greatest killer of all time to a non-existent disease, that's the story of smallpox.